everyone, I'm Fiona and I'm surrounded by beautiful artworks and I'm joined by Vivian Mayer of Vivian Art and Gillian Ross, master printer. Uh, Vivian, I'll start with you. You're a gallery owner and you've got a big exhibit coming up with Gillian uh, this fall. But how do you meet the artists that you feature in your gallery? And let's use uh, Gillian as an example. Well, there's no uh, way consistently that always is how I meet artists. It really differs, but I will say that the most important thing is the relationship I build with the people I work with. And I had already shown William's work once when I met her, but it certainly cemented my desire to continue to do so. And Gillian, same question for you. What makes the collaborations with uh, galleries work for, from your end as, as an artist, as a master printer? Often the works that we're producing at the David Crew Workshop have been shown in David Crew Projects galleries. And looking through someone else's eyes on projects of which you've been working on so extensively for such a long time, I absolutely love and enjoy how different, working with different galleries provide a different kind of energy. And Vivian, let's talk about the show that's coming up uh, featuring uh, Gillian's work. Uh, what are you going to be showing? What is the exhibit going to be involved? Because some of the pieces are not simple as hanging them on a wall. <laughs> they are not simple at all, for sure. And the, the exhibition is still very much taking shape. In fact, part of why I'm here at Griffin Art Projects this weekend is for Gillian and I to go through this exhibition and make some selections. Um, but we will most definitely have at least one piece from the tra Triumphs and Laments of Rome. The Triumphs and Laments of Rome is the most recent project that Gillian and William Kentridge worked on together. They are a number of very large, challenging woodcut prints based on um, images that uh, William created on the walls of the Tiber River. So we will have one of those as the cornerstone piece in our exhibition, and hopefully we'll have Gillian in the space actually assembling the work for people to see. And Gillian, let's talk about assembling the work. Uh, we, of course, have a piece here that we can see on the wall, but we can also see the map of how you put things together. It almost seems like a bit of a puzzle because, of course, you're working in collaboration with William. So tell us how you assemble these works once they are completed in one sense, but still have to be put together in the other. The works are made of, of large pieces of paper, overlapping paper and then smaller collage elements that get pinned on top for final placement. And the way in which they've been created are, um, for, for years I've been watching how William tears paper. In some cases I've torn the paper or cut the taper, paper in preparation for him coming into the studio. And I just have always watched and learned. And it, it, through the, this series of prints, when there's a, a torn piece, in, it, often in William's work, there is a white line that's exposed. And in the woodcuts, we've worked in exposing those white lines and then tearing the sheets back to front, forward to back, cuts using rulers. And, and so it's, it's an extensive layering of, of the process of, of recreating a sense of his own collage work, his puzzle pieces and those kinds of things. So I've emulated that as much as possible in developing the works alongside. Um, and when I piece them together, it requires a map because there are pinholes to place the works together, not just to hold them up onto the, onto the frame of which they get placed within, but as integral as part of the actual work itself. So. And we can see some of the pins on this, on this piece right here that you're talking about, of course, large scale, larger pins. Yes. <laughs> and Vivian, what is this part of the process like for you as a gallery owner when you are putting together an exhibit? You're meeting with the artist, you're deciding on those pieces. It must be a puzzle in a sense for you that you're finding the pieces that fit. Tell me a little bit about that decision making and how you bring the artist into that, uh, that whole process. It's, it's interesting, I mean, it's exciting, for sure, really exciting and wonderful to see um, a lot of these pieces I'm seeing in person for the first time. I was fortunate to be able to see this work, Eight Vessels, actually in process at the University of Alberta print workshops um, last summer in Edmonton. Um, but it's, it's an interesting balance since I am a commercial art gallery and 
ultimately my survival relies on me selling artwork as well. Um, it's, it's a balance of choosing the pieces that I feel speak to the talent of the artist, to their message, um, and to what content I want to bring forward in the curated show that we present, and also being conscious always of trying to have work that is also going to be accessible from a price point um, perspective, which with an artist like William Kentridge is just plain challenging because right. <laughs> the man is incredibly prestigious and established. So um, I can at least rest assured that anyone who purchases any of the work is getting great value at whatever price. And Jillian, what is it like for you when you walk into a gallery like where we are now, or when you do walk into Vivian's gallery, when your pieces uh, that you collaborated uh, with William Kentridge are on, on the wall? What is it like for you when you first walk in and see everything hung on opening nights when we had opening nights? But you know what I mean. <laughs> Actually, it was often daunting, I to bet. tell you the truth, <laughs> um, but exciting. and. When I began my career, David Coot kept the workshop doors open, and we were able, we were forced <laughs> to, to not only learn the technique, but to speak to people as they came through the studio. And it's much the same with William, is that he will stop and speak to anyone that comes in while we're working. And there is something to be said about being able to not only, so you do the same when you walk into the, into the galleries. We're forced to learn something, we can talk to people, we're t teaching them about printmaking, we're teaching them about what collaborative work is, what m a master printer right, might be, how, how engaged they are in creating prints is not reproductions, all of those types of, I, so I've often found it very daunting, but very exciting. So, uh, and especially viewing the works here all together, I, I haven't actually ever been able to do so, except for when I've traveled overseas from South Africa to view some of William's museum shows. So for me, it's extremely exciting. And Vivian, tell us the who, what, where, when, why. How can people check out Vivian Art? Vivian Art is in Calgary, um, in Inglewood, which is a wonderful neighborhood in Calgary. And we're right across from one of the most glorious public presentation museum spaces in the city called the Esker Foundation. Jillian will be with us at Vivian Art this October after we hang our exhibition right around the middle of the month. We'll be having her assemble Lampedusa, which is one of the pieces from the uh, Triumphs and Laments series. And it'll be up right through November, so people will be able to see it in person. The gallery does always ha have a virtual tour as well um, in the days of the pandemic, but I think I always will now. I think that's been a really great addition. And um, this content and other content we'll create um, will also be available virtually. So I think people will have the opportunity to experience the exhibition even if they can't get to Calgary. Wonderful stuff. Well, Vivian, Jillian, thank you so much. And be sure to check out Vivian Art, this wonderful multi-layered collaboration between Vivian, of course, the gallery, Vivian Art, Jillian Ross, and William Kentridge.